Hey guys, welcome back. This video is on exponential functions, SAT style. So I'm breaking this video into three different parts. The first part, we're going to talk about the three types of problems that are usually asked on the SAT. Then part two, we're going to talk about the two different types of equations that are usually used for exponential functions, specifically for this exam. And then part three, we're just going to go over practice problems together. So going back to the three types of questions that are usually asked, the first thing that they like to test you on is whether or not you understand the difference between a linear graph versus an exponential graph. And they ask you this in two different forms. So the first form they usually give you like a scatter plot or a table and then a bunch of numbers and then you have to figure out whether or not the rate of change is linear versus exponential. And then similarly they'll do the same thing but in terms of like a word problem. So we'll give you a word problem, describe a rate of change, and then again you have to basically figure out whether it's linear or exponential. The second type of question is usually a word problem that they basically want you to translate into an actual equation for an exponential function, which means that you basically do need to know the different parts or variables that are incorporated into an exponential equation. And then the third type of problem is basically at this point, they assume that you actually know what an exponential function is, and they want to see if you can convert the unit of time. For example, if the equation is expressed in units of hours, they want to see if you can take the same equation and basically rewrite it in units of time. So those are the three main types of questions that are usually asked. So in order to talk about part two, which is like the two different equations that are used, you do actually need to understand the difference between a linear graph and an exponential graph. So let's talk about that first. Okay, so the first thing you need to understand is the difference between a linear graph and an exponential graph. So recall for a linear graph, it's basically just a line. And in this case, your equation is y equals mx plus b, where m is equal to your slope. But also remember that m is actually a rate, specifically a rate of change. And then this rate is, it never changes. So it's a constant, meaning a constant number. So what it means is that for every increment of time, uh, the amount of change or the amount of increase is the same. This is assuming that your line is going in the positive direction. Unlike for an exponential equation, where it looks more like this. So in this case, your rate isn't the same. And what do I mean by that? I basically mean that in the beginning, your growth is a little bit slow, and then all of a sudden you just jump up. And so to that note, this is a exponential growth graph. And I bring this up because you should also know that instead of going up, you can also go down like this. So this would be an exponential decay. So the, this is the main difference between a linear graph and an exponential graph. So now that we have that set, let's talk about the four main variables with exponential equations before we even talk about the different equations that are on the test. So the first part is you need to know that you have a which is the amount left over. And then you have something called P, which is the original amount. Often this is called the initial amount. And then in terms of like finance, they often call it principal. So this is usually with money. Then you have something called R, which is your rate. This is a number, sometimes it's a percentage, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And then you have something called n, which is the number of times this rate is happening. Specifically, this is actually equal to t, which is your total time, over your rate time, which again, I'll talk about in a little bit. So these are the four main components for any exponential equation. Now let's talk about the first type of exponential equation. So the first one is classically used with finance, but like with the College Board and the SAT, they like to mix it up, so you might get a word problem related to science where you might have to use this equation. So in this equation, you have A, which again is the amount left over, P, which is the amount that you started with, and then one plus or minus a percent to the n power. One thing to note for either equation is this n is always in the exponent form. Okay, so let's talk about this percent. This percent, which is your rate percent, there's two forms of it. So you either add it when you're increasing, 
So they'll say increase, or they like to use the word appreciation, which basically means you're growing. For example, if you put money in a bank and it gains interest, then your account is appreciating. Or you're going to subtract, which is just for a decrease. Again, the word here would be depreciation. For example, when you buy a car, the moment you buy it, the value of it usually drops. So these are the main parts for the percentages. And then let's try to do a problem right now. Okay, problem number one. Andrew invests $2,500 into his savings where the interest grows at 5% annually. Write an expression for A, the amount he has left over in dollars after T years. So just to recap, the equation is A is equal to P, one plus or minus a percent to the n power. How do you know whether or not to use this equation versus the other one? I mean, if you're using a percent here, that's usually a hint that you want to use this equation. So let's first make a table with all the variables because it makes the life a little bit easier. Um, okay, so a we don't know. That's the equation that we're trying to set up. So this is just a. P is the original amount that you have which in this case, it says that you invested 2,500. R is your rate. It says you're growing at a rate of 5% annually. So this is gonna be plus. 5% is actually 0.05. Um, if you don't remember to do percentages, there's a percentage video. Feel free to check that out. And then N is the number of times you're going to do this uh, rate. So you have basically total time over your rate time. This is actually equal to just T, because it says T years, and your rate time is annually, so this would be one time per year. So then this ends up just being T. So then your equation for part A is going to be A is equal to 2,500, one plus 0.05, to the t power. This simplifies to a is 2500 in parentheses 1.05 to t. So we got that one done. Then part b says how much money a in dollars does he have in his account after 10 years? So nothing's really changed in this case. Basically they want you to plug in the time and in this case the time is going to be 10. So you have T is equal to 10 years, and you plug that in, so you have A is equal to 2,500, 1.05 to the power of 10. So the amount that you have is $4,072, and I believe 24 cents. So this is your answer for part B. Okay, so let's talk about the second equation. The second equation is usually involved with science. But again, they mix it up, and so you, you might get something that's more finance or something else related to it. This equation, you again have A, which is the amount that's left over, equal to P, which is the amount that you started with, and then you have a rate. Uh, this is not a percent, this is like an actual number, to the power of N, again. So let's talk about the rate. So when you have R as your rate, you write it based off of the description. So if you're doubling, this means that you have a rate of two. If you're tripling, this is a rate of three. You can go the opposite way. So we talk about half-life, which is talking about the amount of time it takes for a, a, a mass to drop in half the amount. So this is usually half-life, and obviously the number here would be one half. So that's basically your equation right here. Let's go ahead and try a problem. The number two says, in a peachy dish, the initial bacteria population is 10 and doubles every hour. Part A, write an expression for B, which is the population in terms of T hours. Okay, so here they don't give you a percentage, so most likely you'll have to use the second equation. And just to recap, the second equation is A, which is the amount that's left over, equal to P, the original amount, and then in parentheses, it's a rate to power of N. So let's go ahead and make another table again where you have A, P and R and T, or R and N. A here, they want you to call the amount that you have left over as B. 
P is the initial amount. They say here that your initial bacteria population is 10. So this is 10. And then your rate is, well, it says it's doubling. So your rate here should be two. It's doubling every hour, which brings you to part, which brings you to N. So N is supposed to be total time over your rate time. So your total time here, they just said to say that it is just equal to T hours and your rate time is one time per hour. So this just becomes T. So then for part A, your expression is gonna be B is equal to 10 and then in parentheses two to the power of T following the table. And then part B is asking, what's the population after three hours? So three hours is your T value. So then you just plug it in. You have B is equal to 10, and then in parentheses, two to the power of three, which is just eight. So 10 times eight is just equal to a population of 80. And that's how you do problem number two. Let's try problem number three. So problem three is a little bit different. In a petri dish, the initial bacteria population is five and doubles every 10 minutes. Write an expression for B, the population in terms of T minutes. Again, let's make a table. Well, first of all, which equation do you use? Again, it's very similar to the part or question number two. So most likely you will have to use this equation, which is A is equal to P, and then parentheses, your rate to the power of N. And again, let's make a table. So you have your A, P, R and N. Again, they want you to write the population or what is left over as an expression of B. So we have B right here. The population in terms of T minutes. So P is your initial population. It says here that your initial population is five. So we have five. Your rate well, is saying doubling again. So this is two. But this time for N, it's saying that you're doubling every 10 minutes, right? So remember that n is actually equal to total time over your rate time. So this is just equal to t over your rate time, but in this case, your rate time is 10 minutes. So then this is what you would use for n. So for part a, you have b is equal to your initial amount of five and then you're doubling, so you have two to the power of t over 10 minutes. And then for part b, it's asking, what is the population after 30 minutes? So 30 minutes is your t. So again, you can just plug that in. So then you have b is equal to five, and then in parentheses, two to the power of 30 over 10. But 30 over 10 reduces to three. So then b is equal to five to the power of, sorry, b is equal to, b is equal to five, in parentheses, two to the power of three, but two cubed is actually eight. So you have five to parentheses eight, so B is equal to 40. And that's your answer. So for problem number four, I'd like you guys to pause right here and try it on your own. Maybe it'll take like five minutes or so, or even less, and then come back. Okay, so let's try problem number four. In 2005, there are 24 pandas at a zoo. Population P grows at a rate of 15% every year. Part A, what is the exponential model for growth P of T for T years after 2005? So first of all, when it says P of T, don't be thrown off by it if you're not familiar. This is saying that your population as a function of time, it means like your Y value. So what you do want to figure out is which equation to use. This problem gives you a percentage, so most likely you'll have to use the equation with a percent. So to recall, you have A, which is the amount left over, is equal to P, which is the original amount that you started with, 1 plus or minus a percent, the power of N. Let's go ahead and make another table. Okay, so A here is just going to be P of T. So you have the amount that's left over. Your P, which is your original amount, is going to be 24 pandas. And your rate is 15% and it's growing. So in this case, you have a plus and 15% is 0.15. 
And then your N is going to be, well, total time is T years and it's growing every year. So you have T over one time per year, which is just equal to T. So then for part A, your equation should look like P of T is equal to P, which is the original amount, so 24, and then 1 plus 0.15 to the power of T. This simplifies to P of T is equal to 24, in parentheses 1.15 to the power of T. Then part B says, how many pandas are there at the zoo in 2020? So one thing you need to recall, and this is very common for the SAT, is that they'll give you time, standard time as a reference. So here it says that this equation starts in year 2005, meaning you need to figure out the amount of years that have passed from 2005 to 2020. So in this case, you could say 2020 minus 2005 is equal to 15 years. So that would be your value of t. So then you could just plug that into the equation. So you have p of t is equal to 24 and then 1.15 to the power of 15. So p of t should equal 195.29. Round it down for the number of pandas so you get 195 pandas as your population. Okay. So let's try one more problem. So we have this one right here, this one again, try it on your own for about five minutes and then come back in for a review of the problem. Okay, problem number five. The half-life time is the amount of time for an amount to decrease by half. The half-life of an iodine-131 is eight days. If the initial amount is 200 grams, what is the mass after 32 days? Again, this one doesn't give you a percentage, so most likely you'll be using the second equation, which is A, the amount that you have left over, equals P, the original amount, and then your rate to power of N. Again, make a table. Where you have A, which is the amount left over. P is your initial population. So what does it say here? It says that if the initial amount is 200 grams, so you have 200 grams, your rate, well, we're talking about half-life here, so your rate is about a decrease by half amount, so this is one half, and then n is going to be different here. So n, again, is your total time over your rate time. So your total time here, they asked you to figure out how much mass you have after 32 days. So that's going to be 32 days over your rate time, and your rate time is 8 days. Sorry, this should say rate right here. It's 8 days. So 32 divided by 8 is going to be 4. So then basically you have A is equal to 200, and then parentheses you have 1 half to the power of 4. So then you have A is equal to 200, and then this becomes 1 over 200 to the power of 4. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. So then you have 200 times 1 over 16, which is just basically 12.5. So you have 12.5 grams of iodine-131 after 32 days. And that's how you do problem number 5. So I hope you enjoyed this video. There is another video on harder problems with exponential functions. Feel free to check it out and check out the other videos as well. Thanks.